All right, welcome back everybody. This is MTED 110 and today we're doing lecture 5B. So last time we were talking about estimating quantities. Uh, today we're gonna talk about scientific notation. And this is actually quite a short lecture. Um, you might've noticed in the last lecture that there were only a few slides left in this whole chapter. That's because uh, we've kind of covered everything. Uh, how do I wanna say? We've covered all of the deep conceptual things that we need to know in order to understand scientific notation. So now let's, uh, explore. All right, let me get the slides pulled up here. Okay, uh, so scientific notation and estimation because it can help us estimate. So first uh, I'll say this, yeah. Scientific notation lets us easily manage very large, very small quantities and very large quantities and make sense of them in context because the truth is if the numbers start to get really, really, really tiny or they start to get really, really, really big, then uh, it's hard to make sense of them. It's like we lose intuition when it, when it gets to a certain size. Um, and scientific notation can help us regain that intuition. Um, there you go. What it does is essentially this, it enables us to encode the scale. Let me highlight that. It enables us to encode the scale of the numbers as powers of 10, as powers of 10. So those powers of 10 are basically saying how big the things are that we're working with. And once we can keep those powers off to the side, we can work with the, the numbers that we actually, or the numbers that have more meaning, I should say. Um, yeah, it allows us to work with unit size numbers instead. That's the idea. So here's an example. A thousand is 10 cubed, right? So we remember that from chapter two, once again, a thousand is 10 cubed. So 6,000 is like saying that you have six of those. So 6,000 is six times 10 cubed. And that's scientific notation. That's how you write 6,000 in scientific notation, literally. This is 6,000. This is in standard notation. This is in scientific notation. There you go. Um, a billion is 10 to the ninth. So 8.8 .8 billion is 8.8 .8 of those. It's 8.8 .8 of those billions, right? So this right here is 8.8 .8 billion, 800 there you go. That's 8.8 .8 billion. So the nice thing is that we don't want to have to carry all these zeros with us, right? All we really care about are how many billions we're talking about. So really the number that we care about is 8.8. .8. So let's change our scale to the billions and just encode that as a power of 10, 10 to the ninth. And then we can play around with 8.8 .8 on its own. That's the idea. Um, this is 1.6 million. 1.6 million. And this is actually, this is gonna make a lot more sense if you were paying attention to, um, what was it, the, the problems in chapter two where it said, oh, how many whole tens are there? How many whole hundreds? How many uh, whole thousands? How many partial thousands? It's the same thing here. It's the same thing here, the exact same concept. Uh, here we go, this number is zero point zero 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 three five that's three point five but at this scale that's what we're saying here or like you know that that uh that like siri that siri tweak that you can do where you have her like compute 10 to the 10 or whatever and she's like zero 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 right anyway um here's the the current national debt for example it's 22.3 trillion it was three trillion less four years ago um, but this is how you would write it in scientific notation. Or, I'm sorry, not technically, not technically scientific notation. And we'll see why in a minute. Um, the reason is because this leading number needs to be between one and 10 if you want it to be in scientific notation. But for these particular purposes, it's more meaningful for us to say 22.3 trillion than it is to say 2.23 10 trillions, right? We don't generally say that, but we could, we could, we just don't generally do it. Um, or how about this one? I'm sure some of you remember this from chemistry back in high school, Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Well, this is what that number is right down here. But do you really wanna to have to carry with you all of those zeros, all of those extra zeros, all these things? No, what you really care about is this part of the number. And this is the scale that you're at. Some really, 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 really big amount but we've got that many of those. That's the idea. So that's what scientific notation is all about. Okay, so let's get to the definition. And before we can look at the definition of scientific notation, we need to see, we need to explore the definition of exponentiation. So quite literally, this symbol 
b to the n is the same thing as multiplying b by itself n times. That's what you're doing. So b to the third is b times b times b. b to the fifth is b times b times b times b times b. b to the nth is b times 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 n times, right? That's the idea. So anytime you see this symbol, you want to think about repeated multiplication. That's what you want to do, repeated multiplication. All right, so here is the definition of scientific notation. A number is written in scientific notation when it's written in this form right here. Some number a times 10 to the n. That's what you're trying to go for. Some number a times 10 to the n. But the caveat here is that that number a has to be between 1 and 10. And notice that it doesn't include it doesn't include 10. And that's because if you if you had a 10 in there, you could just wrap it up as another power of 10. So you would just include it there instead. Um, this number 10 is also called the base. It's called the base of the exponent or the base of the exponential. That's one of the reasons I use the letter B here because that's the base. <clears throat> um, you might, again, if you wanna think back to chapter two, it's all very intimately connected. Uh, so these are the, the laws of exponents. It's important to remember these. Um, I think we can go over a couple of them just to show you. Uh, but if you would like, I can go over them in much more detail in the collaboration meetings. These are just the standard properties of exponents that you're supposed to learn back in algebra. But let's focus on um, this one, for example. If you've got some number b to the m times b to the n, where the bases are the same, then you can just add the exponents and the result is the same. Let me show you up here. So let's say, let me show you up here. Let's say, for example, we had 3 to the 5th times 3 to the 11th. First of all, the bases are the same. That's the key idea here. The bases have to be the same for this property to work, b, b. Um, this is the same as 3 to the 5 plus 11, and that is 3 to the 16th. All right? And you can compute that if you want. Do you believe me? All right, I guess if you believe me, then everything's fine, right? We'll move right along. If anybody is going to dare me to prove it, and you should, I'll do that in the collaboration meeting. Um, this one we've seen before, b to the 0 is 1. This one is if you exponentiate something that you're already exponentiating, that's the same as multiplying in the exponent. So I'll do this one, actually. Uh, if you had something like 3 to the 5th to the 11th, that's going to be the same as 3 to the 5 times 11 which is 3 to the 55th. There you go. And then there's this one where you can do the subtraction. So if you want me to go through those more, please ask and I'll go through them in the, uh, the collaboration meeting. Okay, um, but let's think about this. So this is really the, the whole idea behind scientific notation. And I want you to take a moment and just think to yourself or think to your group and ask yourself, are these two numbers close to each other? Are they close to each other? Hmm. What do you think? What do you think? Are they close to each other? Talk out loud. See what you think. Why are they close to each other? Why are they not close to each other? See what you think. Okay, now how about this? Are these two numbers close to each other? Think about it. Look at these numbers for a minute and ask yourself, are these two numbers close to each other? What do you think? What do you think? Well, talk about what you think. Talk about what you just thought about. Talk about it to yourself. Talk about it to a ghost. Talk about it to somebody. Just say it out loud, okay? Hmm. Okay, and then let's look at one more set, okay? Let's look at one more set. What about those two numbers? Are those two numbers close to each other? Hmm. 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 What do you think? Hmm. What do you think? What do you think? Are they close to each other? Well, let's talk about it. Here, I'm guessing that most of you said those two numbers were certainly close to each other. Um, one way you can you can explain it is to think about it in some kind of context, like uh, dollars, right? What if what what's the the difference between three dollars and thirty cents? 
and three dollars and thirty cents plus some tiny fraction of a penny. Would you say those two quantities are close to each other? I think most people would say yes. Most people would say yes, those two numbers are close to each other. Now look at the next set right here. Are those two numbers close to each other? Let's see if we can say that in words, maybe that'll help. That is 330 billion versus 330 billion 7,000. What do you think? Close or not? Uh, what's funny is some of you might think that they're actually not that close because if you were to put it in dollars terms, 7,000 is a lot of money, right? Well, it's not a lot of money at all when you're dealing in the scale of billions, right? So this is actually one thing to keep in mind nowadays, right? If you're dealing in scales of billions, thousands mean nothing. They mean literally nothing. And you can tell right here, think about how you felt when you compared these two numbers. That's what it's like. So here's a good example. If you're a billionaire, this is what thousands look like to you. This is what you're dealing with. And this is what a thousand is, right? So if you thought these two numbers were really, really close to each other, what, what you're really saying is that this last little bit at the end is almost insignificant, right? Well, think about that in terms of money, right? Think about it in terms of if you had billions of dollars, this 7,000 that's left over is nothing to you. You don't really care about that. Think about that. And then down here, this is actually encoding exactly what this number is above. Let me, so let me highlight this here. Uh, sorry, let me, let me do this a little better. Here we go. Those two are the same. Those two are the same numbers. Or, I'm sorry, uh, uh, those two pairs of numbers are the same. So this right here is equal to that. And this right here is equal to that. So again, if you're talking about billions, you can encode the real meaning of the quantities you're dealing with by just pushing the actual unit of a billion off to the side and then thinking about what you're really dealing with right there. So this is why scientific notation is so handy because the numbers that we really care about are these unit sized numbers. And this is just encoding the scale at which we're working. All right, uh, let's try this one. What is uh, 8,600,000 divided by 2 million? Think about it, compute it. See if you could figure that out. Hmm, hmm. What do you think? Now try this one. What is 8.6 divided by two? Hmm. Hmm. How about this one? What is 8.6 times 10 to the sixth divided by two times 10 to the sixth? Hmm. Interesting, right? So notice here uh, that this one is usually, this one is probably the easier of the three to compute, right? 8.6 divided by two, that's 4.3. I can do that one in my head, 4.3. But what's this one right here? Notice how it feels different. It, it feels different. Your emotional response is different. And that makes sense because the scale of the numbers is different and you're, you're, uh, you're feeling the scale, right? And it's the scale that's overwhelming you, not the computation itself, it's the scale. And that's why this is so handy because these are the same. These are the same. Actually, the answer is the same for each one of these problems, right? Uh, they're all the same. <laughs> um, but I guess I should emphasize or specify that this is this and this is this. But the computation is the same in all three of these problems. So let's go back here and see if we can do it. Yeah, this one. How many times does 2 million go into 8.6 million? 4.3 times. And this is the same thing right here. That's 8.6 millions, 8.6 millions. And this is 2 millions, 2 millions right there. So that's going to be 4.3. Pretty cool, huh? So that's what scientific notation is all about. That's it. So now let's play with some scientific notation. Let's take a look at activity 5B. <laughs> here we go. Okay. So in this one, you're computing using scientific notation and make sure your final answer is in scientific notation. So that's one thing to make sure. Remember the definition of scientific notation says that the, uh, the leading number, do I have it? Yeah, version of it, no, I guess not. Um, the leading number is between one and 10, right? So keep that in mind. So you're just doing these computations, but 
you want to compute using scientific notation. So you need to write out the scientific notation and then do the computations, right? That's what you're gonna do. All right, so you do that a few times. Um, this is a good one here. So this problem is just helping you gain an idea of the scale of things. It's important to have an idea of the scale of these numbers because that's what gives us intuition. That's what gives us uh, a robust control over these numbers like we were talking about. All right, uh, question three here. This one is just having you compare different exponential behavior, or I should say compare exponential behavior to multiplicative behavior. So here you can just do a table or you can write out a couple lists, but you're just gonna compute those as n changes, beginning with n equals one, and then just kind of see how the numbers change as you keep increasing n and compare the results you're, that you get. And then the question is, does it grow faster when n is an exponent or when n is a base? <clears throat> and then this is a cool one too. This one just gives you some intuition for the size of computer memory. Um, here, a kilobyte is 1,024 bytes. A megabyte is two to the 20 bytes. A gigabyte is two to the 30 bytes. Which of these quantities is close to a billion? So think about it, think about it, okay? All right, so that's activity 5A. Let me be sure here, or I'm sorry, I'm sorry, that's activity 5B, and that takes us to the end of chapter five. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and call it a day. Thank you once again for hanging out. Uh, luckily, this is a pretty short lecture, so it's kind of a nice reprieve, right? Um, I'll see you at the collaboration meetings, and I'll see you at the next lecture. Have a good one.